So today's video, I want to cover, I want to give you a, a brief overview of the history of the relationship between black people in America and the police forces. One of the reasons why I want to do this video, uh, for one, I think we should know this history. We should know the reason why we have so much tension between the people of our communities and the police forces. Um, also, a narrative has been created and is circulating as if black people in America just decided to not like the police. Um, a narrative is being created to kind of paint the picture that the issues that we have with police departments are new. Like it's something that developed in the 1950s or 60s or only when the Black Panthers started. And actually, from my research, the issues that we've been having with police forces date back to the 1500s. So let me go into it, right? Um, so the predecessors, or, or you could say the prototype of the slave patrols, the prototype to the slave patrols existed in Central and South America and in the Caribbean during like the 1530s and the mid 1500s, right? Um, around 1600, the island of Barbados uh, being a British colony, they adopted a European style of military, uh, a military style of police patrolling, uh, a style that was later adopted by Jamaica, Antigua, and South Carolina. Um, so basically an aggressive form of subjugating slaves and blacks who were free to instill fear, right? And so, so let's come to to the Americas. Now, <clears throat> there seems to be in the Americas, in the beginning, two types of police patrolling that was created, but nevertheless, both types of police patrolling were oppressive to blacks, were designed to keep the unruly intact, right? So, Cities like Boston and New York and Philadelphia were some of the first ones to create night watches. So Boston created night watches in 1636, New York in 1658, and Philadelphia in the 1700s. And the night watches were complemented later on in 1800s by day watches. And New York established day watches in... Um, around 1938, around 1933, excuse me. So, now, the issue with these day watches were volunteers, not people weren't paid, so it wasn't like the modern day police force, people were not paid, they were not professionals at this, they just enlisted some people, but nevertheless, it was still designed to keep the unruly intact, and of course, keep slaves in line and keep black people in line. Right? Now, um, Around oh uh, well around the eighteen twenty around the eighteen twenties late eighteen twenties around eighteen twenty nine. Let me read this to you. The concept of a professional police force was copied from London's Metropolitan Police Department, which had been established in that in eighteen twenty nine. These peace agents were called Peelers or Bobbies after Sir Robert Peel, founder of the institution. The American version of these agents were known as coppers because they wore copper stars as badges on their uniforms. They were available 24-7, carried guns, and were trained to think of themselves as better than the working class that were they recruited from. That last part was an opinion by the writer, but nevertheless giving you the, the idea of one of the founding concepts of modern police force or modern police officers. So uh, I'm going to read this to you as well. In order for the police force to be effective, Peel believed this should work under his principles of law and force of law enforcement, which explicitly stated an ideology summarized by the, and I'm gonna give you the following nine points. Now these are his points. These are not necessarily things that are happening today, but these are the points that, that Peel created. So the first one is the police exist to prevent crime and disorder. 
police must maintain public respect and approval in order to perform their duties. Willing cooperation of the public to voluntarily observe laws and must be secured. Police use, police use of force depends on the degree of cooperation of the public. The police must be friendly to all members of society while enforcing the law in a non-biased manner. Use of physical force Use of physical force should be to the extent necessary to secure the compliance of the law. Police are the public and public are the police. Police should protect and uphold the law, not the state. Efficiency is measured by the absence of crime or disorder. So that, those are the ideas that Peel created for, um, for policing. Now, the volunteers that were part of the patrollers um, were overseen by constables and these constables I guess you could say kind of uh, all this kind of helped transform to the modern police force where you have the overseers or the people who are the supervisors of the, poli of the police officers who we would see on a regular basis right um, around 1830 the idea of a centralized municipal poli police department was emer uh, was created in the United States. In 1838, the city of Boston established the first police force, followed by New York in 1845, Albany, New York, and Chicago in 1851, New Orleans and Cincinnati in 1853, Philly in 1855, Newark, New Jersey, and Baltimore in 1857. Uh, by the late 1880s, a lot of the major U.S. cities had their municipal police forces. So we're talking about still a lot of major northern cities now this was happening in the north while in the south a whole nother thing was going on actual slave patrols going on in the south right the first former slave patrol was created in the carolina colonies in 1704 slave patrols had three primary functions one to, to chase down apprehend and return to their owners runaway slaves two to provide a form of organized terror to, to deter slave revolts and three to maintain a form of discipline for slave workers who were subject to some to summary justice outside the law if it violated any plantation rules right um, so after that well after after the slave patrols were were implemented then you had um, all these other vigilante groups uh, the KKK being created then you had these laws that help to enforce this other stuff like supporting laws that help to support the brutality that the police forces were inflicting upon black people in the United States uh, Jim Jim Crow laws came much later but we let's talk about the black codes first I mean the slave codes excuse me the slave codes right so when the slave codes were created they had to be enforced so more pro more police brutality so uh, the South Carolina Act of 1740 said whereas the having slaves taught to write or suffering them to be employed in writing may be attended with great inconveniences be it enacted that all and every person and persons whatsoever who shall have to teach or cause any slave or slaves to be taught to write or shall use or employ any slave as a scribe in any manner of writing whatsoever hereafter taught to write every such person or person shall for every such offense forfeit the sum of 100 pounds current money so that was for South Carolina in Virginia the the slave code of 1819 stated that all meetings or assemblies assemblages of slaves or free negroes or mulattoes mixing and associating with such slaves at any meeting house or houses in the night or at any school or schools for teaching them or reading or writing either in the day or night under whatsoever pretext shall be deemed and considered an unlawful assembly and any justice of a county wherein such assembly shall be either from his own knowledge or the information of others of such unlawful assemblage may, may use his warrant directed to any sworn officer or officers authorizing him or them to enter the house or houses with such unlawful assemblages may be the purpose of apprehending or dispersing such slaves and to inflict corporal punishment 
on the offender or offenders at the discretion of any justice of the peace not exceeding 20 lashes so basically you can see in there especially in the the codes of uh, Virginia that force brutal force physical force can be used to um, correct action right and those who caught them could act as the enforcers of the law right the patrollers and so we also had the casual killing act that was passed in, on October of 1669 which stated whereas the only law in force for the punishment or refractory servants resisting their master mistresses or overseer cannot be inflicted upon Negroes nor the obstinacy of many of them by other than violent means suppressed be it enacted and declared by this grand assembly if any slave resists his master or others by his master's order correcting him and by the extremity of the correction should chance to die that his death shall not be considered a felony but the master or that other person appointed by the master to punish him be acquitted for molestation since it cannot be presumed presumed that malice existed which alone makes murder a felony or that anything should induce a man to destroy his own estate so laws were created to protect not only the slave patrol and the police officers or the coppers or whatever title that they use not only um, like what well, well basically these laws were created to help protect those who killed the slaves